Hi, uh, good morning. Can I just ask how many of you have heard of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation? Wow, this is, uh, this is our crowd. So uh, it's great to be here. I want to um, thank uh, Sid and Priyanka and everyone at GitLab for inviting me. Uh, GitLab was a very early contributor and member of CNCF. They've been uh, very focused on Kubernetes and the Cloud Native ecosystem uh, really for the whole four years that we've been around. And uh, Priyanka is now uh, our board member for CNCF. So uh, we're great to see that relationship continue. For folks who haven't heard of us, we're almost four years old. Uh, we are now the largest open source software foundation uh, ever. If you ignore our parent, the Linux Foundation, where of course all of our members are also their members, and uh, they have a lot of other uh, foundations that uh, have similar technologies. But uh, we're best known for Kubernetes. We have a number of other uh, graduated projects that are our most mature, like Prometheus and Envoy and Container D, and then a number of incubating technologies that are quite promising. And you can see our uh, 18 platinum members here that uh, provide a lot of our funding, including, as of this summer, Apple, uh, who we were quite pleased to add. And um, this is our model of uh, maturity, where we talk about last year was uh, when Kubernetes crossed the chasm and uh, became uh, suitable for early, the early majority. But the reality is that most organizations and most divisions and most enterprises have not actually made their cloud native journey yet. They're still just getting started. And um, these are our sandbox projects, which are less mature, um, very worth looking into, a lot of promise there. But over time, we're helping those projects, hopefully uh, many of them, to succeed and to move forward to incubation and graduation. And then uh, here are a few of the other parts of the Linux Foundation. We host Let's Encrypt, which provides most of the world's security certificates. LF Networking, which is uh, serving more than 60% of all mobile subscribers out there. Automotive grade Linux, shipping in uh, tons of new cars from Toyota, Ford, and others. Hyperledger is the leading blockchain. Node.js is uh, the leading uh, application framework, and a bunch of others. So we're uh, providing services to all of these open source projects, bringing together the contributors to help them be more successful. Um, one project in CNCF that I want to mention to you is called cncf.ci. This is not quite finished yet, but it's under very active development. And what we're doing is every day taking the latest version of Kubernetes, the head, and it's um, 1.16 is about to ship, uh, hopefully tomorrow, and uh, compiling it and deploying it onto actually um, hardware contributed by another uh, New York-based uh, startup called Packet. And um, we're then running a bunch of our other projects, compiling the heads of those uh, and, put, and showing that they all do work together. And this is all built on top of GitLab. And so you can try it out right now on your phone or your computer, cncf.ci. But we've really appreciated uh, GitLab's support as we've uh, rolled this out. And a major new feature that we just added this summer is uh, that all of these builds and deployments and such are not just working on x86 hardware, but also ARM hardware. And that shows some of the portability and flexibility of uh, GitLab and also our whole ecosystem that uh, we really are trying to uh, serve all the different uh, kinds of hardware we can. OK. so. Today, I'd like to talk to you about uh, a pretty simple question, how good is our code? And this is um, a look at KubeCon Berlin when it was much smaller two years ago. We had uh, 1,500 people there as compared to uh, 7,700 in Barcelona a few months ago. This was the keynote stage, and uh, I believe that's Priyanka uh, up there. And uh, when you zoom in, you can see this definition we have of cloud native orchestration, containerization, microservices. And we have the question, which of these is the most important? So I'm going to uh, show a short video that helped uh, me understand our priorities.
Okay, so I just love that, and I, I will point out that that video was uh, partly responsible for uh, Juicero, which uh, raised $120 million of venture capital and then uh, collapsed about a year and a half ago. I also want to point out that's done by Bloomberg, which is a, uh, has been an end user member of CNCF, is a huge Kubernetes user, and we uh, really appreciate their engagement with, uh, with our community. But anyway, the, um, the former CEO of that organization, uh, Doug Evans, after his, after his company failed, went on a 10-day cleanse, drinking nothing but live water. And what is live water, you ask? It's unfiltered, untreated, unsterilized spring water. So, uh, uh, I haven't tasted tap water in a long time, he said. You have to be agile and tactile and be available to experiment. Literally, you have to carry bottles of water through the dark. So let's take a look at the live water of software development. Our new software consultancy produces what we call raw code, guaranteed not to have passed through CI or any kind of onerous testing. The result is a palpably richer and more authentic software experience. <laughs> See, no, no need for GitLab when you, when you deal with live code, raw code. Uh, so, but let's take this one step further. So, uh, how many of us use SQLite? It is uh, a trick question because it's actually built into iOS, Android, Chrome, and Firefox. So, we all do. And a very little software has as positive a reputation as SQLite. It was uh, developed mainly by one very highly regarded developer, 100% branch test coverage, millions of test cases, literally a thousand times as much test code as a product, uh, product code. And then um, American Fuzzy Lop came along. Not uh, this American Fuzzy Lop, but the software fuzzer built, built by Mikhail Zalewski that uses genetic algorithms to find bugs. And uh, in less than 30 minutes of work, AFL found 22 bugs in SQLite. Now, I want to emphasize that all of those were fixed, and they actually built AFL into their build process to avoid recursion. Uh, but our code is not as good as SQLite's. And the problem is bigger than that. So uh, another question, how big is our app? It's not enough to just look at the surface area of the code that we've written, because our app is potentially vulnerable to all of the software that it depends on, and then all of the software that that software depends on transitively all the way down. So I did the app on a, the calculations on an app that CNCF has been building called the Interactive Landscape. And uh, let me give you, so uh, at the base, we uh, run it on top of Linux, and that's 17 million source lines of code. And let me give a shout out here to David Wheeler, who created uh, the app, the utility slot count that I'm using for these calculations. And then, uh, of course, we run it on Kubernetes, which amazingly now is double Linux's slot count. It has 35 million lines of code. And uh, I will point out that we're not using all of that code. In any given uh, environment, you're only using some subset of it, but somebody is. And so bugs and vulnerabilities in that code really doesn't matter. And it's a Node.js application, which is uh, about 70% the size of Linux. And then if you've ever used Node.js and NPM, you know that there's tons and tons of libraries. And uh, we depend, uh, which is another two and a half million lines of code here, things like Webpack and Babel. And then finally, at the tippy top of the pyramid is our actual code that we wrote, about 40,000 lines for uh, the interactive landscape. And uh, just for uh, comparison, the NPM modules that it depends on are 63 times more code than we wrote directly. So let's look at all of that. Uh, by comparison, and you can see that Kubernetes is about half, and Linux is about a quarter, and Node.js, and uh, the NPM modules, but I actually forgot uh, one little pie slice here. Here is act the code that we actually wrote is 0.1% of all of the code that we depend on. 
And um, unfortunately, we're not the only ones working with this software stack. There are a lot of black hats out there looking for vulnerabilities in every part of our stack, whether or not it's open source. And so uh, just in the last couple years, uh, we had Webpack suffer from divide concept. And uh, folks are familiar that uh, Node.js uses OpenSSL. Of course, that had this huge Heartbleed vulnerability about five years ago. Uh, Kubernetes has had Subpath and a number of others. And then uh, Linux, it was uh, subject to Spectre and Meltdown, although the stable kernel maintainer, Greg KH, wanted me to mention that this was actually a problem in the underlying x86 hardware, and then Linux had to fix the issues. Uh, but we, uh, people still were very much vulnerable. OK, so the power of open source is this ability to leverage thousands of other developers that are finding bugs and making fixes to the software that we depend on. But the software patches that come in only help if we deploy them into production. And that gives us a really basic question, how can we have the confidence that we can update that, we can uh, take those patches, and it won't break anything? And the answer, very simply, is continuous integration. CI simply means running our tests every time we change our software. And uh, so another question, what kind of tests should CI run? There are unit testing of individual portions of our source code in isolation, integration testing where we check working with external systems like a database, regression testing where we add a test uh, when there's a failure to make sure it doesn't come back again, smoke testing that, uh, uh, or also known as build verification testing that just makes that sure that the happy path through, uh, through our software works correctly. And uh, the answer is, all of the above. The more tests that you can run and the more different kinds that you can run uh, are the better, uh, the, the better you are. But we can get started uh, with just a smoke test. And that's the idea that we turn on, you turn on the machine and you see whether smoke comes out or not. So no matter how antiquated the code base that we've inherited, we can run some smoke, we can write some smoke tests, make sure that that happy path is functioning correctly, and then every time we make a change, we can run those smoke tests on every commit. So now, let's return to a few of our early questions. Uh, first, how good is our code? And the answer is not good enough. We need to build in the systems and the processes that enable us to continuously improve it. And of course, that's why we're all here at GitLab Commit, and uh, they do have a, a bunch of fantastic software that helps with these processes. And then second, which of these parts of the cloud native uh, definition are the most important, is the most important? And my answer is that uh, it's actually none of these, that the single most important part of a cloud native journey is a continuous integration, or CI. Or uh, to quote Kelsey Hightower, uh, if you don't have a CI system capable of building your application, then Kubernetes is the least of your problems. Focus on CI first. But um, let's take this one step further. So uh, continuous integration is just constant testing. But what is testing? Testing is like science. We have a hypothesis of what we believe our code should do, but we don't know for sure unless we test it against objective reality. Uh, so Karl Popper defined science as being testable and falsifiable. And uh, now we can come back and say, what do continuous integration, science, and entrepreneurship all have in common? And the answer is that each of them require comparing an idealized conception to the often brutal truth of objective reality. And that brings us full circle to live water and back to Doug Evans and Juicero. Because no matter what you believe, no scientific test is going to demonstrate any validity to the health claims of live water. And even if your company succeeds in raising $120 million, your company will fail if your cu customers feel defrauded by your product. And no matter how great we think our code might be, if uh, our smoke test won't run, then uh, we can't deploy it. So uh, that continuous integration that journey, uh, the how does that fit into our cloud-native journey? And this is a, a document that you can get 
uh, right here from uh, l.cncf.io that uh, people find helpful thinking about that journey. And my answer is that uh, it should come second. That uh, the, probably the first thing you want to do is look at containerizing your apps so you don't have to uh, essentially build your test environment twice, but you really do want to look at uh, deploying your CI systems prior to orchestration and all the fancier stuff like observability and service meshes and everything comes below it. And um, I referred before to this uh, interactive application. You can uh, see it here, and this is at l.cncf.io. And of course, it's a completely overwhelming document, but uh, the interactive application actually allows you to zoom into individual areas, click and find information about uh, the different projects and products. GitLab, of course, is on there under the CI CD section. And then uh, do some pretty interesting sorts about latest commit, first commit. Um, you, here's the zoom in on the, uh, on the CI portion, and you can see Get, GitLab in, uh, in the middle on the right. Um, so I, uh, I do um, hope that you find this tool useful as you continue your exploration of the cloud-native ecosystem. Uh, it does work either on your phone or your desktop, and, and I do encourage you to play with it. And then um, I just wanted to finish up by inviting all of you to please consider coming to uh, KubeCon San Diego uh, November 18th in, uh, in San Diego. It is going to be uh, the largest open source developer conference ever. We're expecting uh, more than 12,000 people to attend, uh, which really speaks to the growth of this ecosystem. We'll then be in Amsterdam in uh, March of 2020. And uh, I'll also give a quick shout out that we're now launching a series of Kubernetes forums that are um, smaller, uh, about 1,500 people attending, but we're gonna be in nine global cities around the world over the next year. So starting in Seoul and Sydney in December, Bengaluru and New Delhi, Tel Aviv, Mexico City and Sao Paulo, and then uh, Tokyo and Singapore. So we're pretty excited. And uh, just finishing on uh, the growth of this, uh, four years ago, the first KubeCon was exactly the size of this event. And so it is a, a pretty crazy process in that four years time that we're gonna have 23,000 people in 2019 at our three events in, uh, in Amsterdam, in uh, Barcelona, Shanghai, and San Diego. And so uh, we really do wanna thank again GitLab um, for their support through that process. And uh, it's been great to partner with them that whole way. So uh, lots more information at cncf.io, but uh, thank you all very much, and uh, have a great day here.